Hey, I'm Matt Hudgens, and he's Dave Albany, and this is Profitability MD. Dave, how you doing today, buddy? Man, I'm doing great. How are you? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. I got a little haircut, you know. I need one. Cleaning. You need one. That's right. You need <laughs> All right, episode 118, four ways for your business to thrive. Four ways to thrive in business, or four ways for your business to thrive. Either way, that all works. It all works. So I just had a conversation. I've had two conversations today, one with a kind of a startup and one with an existing business. Um, but it's so funny. We keep going back to, and last week we talked about our fundamentals, your fundamentals. And, and so the, the, the number one thing we tell you would be uh, know your niche, right? Know your niche. Who's your target audience? Who's your target market, right? Yeah, and I think that um, it's, it's the same whether you're talking sports, business, whatever. Um, it's the fundamentals that matter. It's I mean, so we do often talk about similar topics here on the, on our show because, well, fundamentals are what – they're fundamental for a reason. That's why they drive the business. I was talking to a startup firm this, this uh, earlier today. They're starting up, got a new product, yada, yada, yada. And uh, so the interesting was, was, all right, who is your target market? Is it – typically it's your, you know, people like you because you invented it kind of to solve your own problem. But who is your target market? Who, who are you trying to go after? Who, who is your target market? And the reason being, and what's really cool now, I'm, I'm taking a side note already early on, is crowdfunding. So here's a guy with a new product, a new idea, a new service, a new uh, product. And, you know, Dan Sullivan always says, go to the check writers. You know, don't ask your friend. Dan, Dan Sullivan, our guru, you know, strategic coach. He says, go to the check writers. Don't ask your friends. Don't ask your mother. Don't ask your wife. Don't ask your brother or your cousin. They're not check writers. Go to the check writers and see if you can get them to write you a check for money, right? What is that? The epitome of that is crowdfunding, right? Kickstarter, crowdfunding, uh, all those names, but let's just call it crowdfunding as a topic, which is here's my idea. Here's a cool video of why I made it. You know, marketing, it's gonna be our marketing, right? And then, hey, you wanna pre-order it? Help me get it started right? Because I got to build a prototype or I have a prototype built, but I don't know how many of these things I should make. Um, so that's what I was, that's my message was, oh, who's your target market? What's your million dollar message? What's your irresistible offer? All those fundamentals. Oh gosh, I just told you our whole thrive, didn't you? <laughs> how to thrive your business. To thrive. But not the whole thing. I mean, you, we start out with know your niche and, yeah. and this is really, yes, knowing who your, who your, target is but then knowing them on a personal level is really when you get into um i i'm going to use dog food for example and yeah. some of the mistakes we made early well our niche is a much higher um a higher more affluent dog owner so when we were offering a free plus shipping offer what we were attracting was not in our niche and so no matter how much advertising we spent to acquire clients because it wasn't the right client, sure, we were getting people to sign up, but our, our acquisition costs were high because we weren't retaining those clients. So, By the way, this is know your numbers. That's another key indicator. Yeah. You're talking about knowing your numbers. Go ahead. Keep going. Yeah, so, so knowing the niche, knowing who the target was, and, and this is, by the way, when you're, when any, anytime you're launching a product, if, if you think it's just everything just happens exactly the way you think it's going to happen. It never, never happens, happens that way. You, you have to learn your market, but as you, as you go through, what happens is you, you start to narrow down who it is. Uh, it, uh, I forget who says it, who, not how. You're, yeah. you're really looking into who the niche is. And when you yes. know that person and you can really speak to them, like, on a one-on-one -on -one level, that's when you're really going to be able to attract them to your offer. And like Dan said, go to the check writers. Well, in our case, offering a free plus shipping offer um, really wasn't the check writers. Those are right. the people who are cheap and looking for the freebies. So, so if, if you got a new product and you're bringing it to the market and let's say it's got a $500 price point, well, you better know who's going to, what type of people are going to write that $500 check? Because there's a lot of people who will pay $500 for a lawnmower that cuts the lawn with all on remote control. I, I see that's a new thing coming now. Yeah. Um, 
where you you walk the lawn with it one time or something. I, I was watching a video about this. You walk it one time and then it remembers that pattern. Okay. So it'll go and now uh, just like the the Roomba vacuum cleaner, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it yeah. goes through the it learns the house. Well, I guess somebody's got a lawnmower that is doing something similar. I, I thought it was pretty cool. But knowing the market, who's the market? People who don't want to pay a landscaper, but yet they are willing to pay for a good lawnmower to do it them. So they're kind of doing it themselves. So they're actually a lazy person a little bit, but not, and they have a little bit of money, but they don't want to spend it. So, I mean, that's really getting into a niche that's market. very specific. Well, we were talking about another thing is talking about the wow experience, how to enhance the experience. And so you were just talking about that, you know, value added is one of our things. How do I value add? And so they were talking about, and this is a little bit about, so it's the first time, you know, you usually do this in dog food business. It's a, it's a customer first time purchase, you know, include a discount code for the next purchase because you want them to come back, right? Um, you know, postcard offering an exclusive discount to them because you're a first time order. We have an exclusive offer, whether it be a guided value added, right? It's a specific product where you know your margins are high so you can afford to give them the discount, right? Or it's a discount on a multi-order. Hey, get on a subscription service and we'll give you $5 off a bag if you sign up for a year. But it's almost like you're doing them a favor. Hey, because you're a first time customer, I slip this into your, I, I don't tell the boss, I slip this into your package. You're gonna get this exclusive offer, right? When in the copywriting world, when you're creating an offer, what they say is the bonus, whatever that bonus yes. is, that was what yes. you're talking about. Yes. The bonus should be the thing that sets them over the edge, but the bonus should stand alone that the person would say, I would pay for this bonus, right. even if it didn't include the original product. And yeah. typically what you try to do is you sell people what they want and you give them what they need. So yeah. to give them what they need is the bonus. You sell them what they want because people buy what they want. They don't buy what they need. They, so, you know, people need a car, but they buy the car they want, you know, with all the, all the gadgets all and the, the gadgets leather seats and, and all. Oh, yeah. So it's the same thing. You give them what they need. And that's the bonus. That value add should be something they really, wow, I, I really need it. Like if you were in the gun business, I probably well, not the I got a great example. So, so like I order stuff off of one of my golf websites, you know, when I'm buying golf clubs and golf balls and golf gloves and just, you know, stuff. And so my website on the checkout, you get the free golf magazine, free subscription to golf magazine, right? I'm already a golfer, free subscription to golf magazine. And they usually add on another one, you know, a, a travel magazine or a cigar aficionado. I'm not a cigar, a wine aficionado, you know. And so they're offering that as a free quote unquote bonus, right? As a value added because I ordered stuff off their website. Now I'm sure they have another deal from them, right? Because what would Golf Digest want? Well, they want more eyeballs or more subscriptions. So even if they give the first subscription to me for free, they're hoping I'll renew it on an annual basis, right? They need eyeballs, so Golf Digest can sell more eyeballs so they can say their circulation is higher. Yeah, because ultimately it's the advertisers who advertise in their book who yeah, pay for that. Golf magazine. But yeah. they sell you their eyeballs, so they don't care. Right. But it's, it's funny, they know their niche. So about 40% yes. of golfers uh, probably smoke cigars. I say probably, I don't know the number. Right, I just, right. I just travel, made that. high in travel. I just got back from a golf trip to Palm Beach. I'm spending money on travel because I'm a golfer, right? Uh, so, so golfers travel. Skiers are the same kind of people. So you could maybe offer a ski magazine. Uh, the tennis people travel. So, but that's a neat little value added bonus, and that you really need if you're going direct to consumer for your business to thrive. Is we talked about that before. What other value added can you do? Where then it's then it's a joint venture or strategic alliance. We've talked about those before, which I don't even have that on our list here. But I would say, you know, find a strategic partner, find a joint venture, find somebody that you can do that offer with, right? The landscaper with the with the pressure washer guy. You know, you each give away each other's first service for free, right? There's a value added bonus. I'm your landscaper, and hey, this month special is I got the the, the, the pressure washer for free. Next month special, gutter cleaning for free, right? And the month after that might be whatever, paint your garage door for free. I don't know, I'm making that one up. But you could actually be the landscaper and have a different offer with a different JV partner every single month, right? And, and we talk about that a lot on, on this. Yeah, we talk yeah. about the JV partners. 
I think too many business owners are somehow afraid that that'll detract from their, their core business. When in reality, it, pu it puts you in a far better position because you're saying, hey, I noticed you have some mold or green stuff on your siding. Um, I got a real good friend of mine who does pressure washing. I mean, would you like him to, to call you about that? And they're, what's the worst I could say? No. But, no, I, I mean, I, I, but that's exactly right. So you can say in my own example, right? So I happen to um, work dentists is one of my nieces. I work with a lot of dentists. And so I happen to reconnect with some dental marketing guys, right? Some dental marketing guys. We used to do some joint ventures together. Haven't done it in a while in my own example. So then when I talked to a dental coaching client this morning, I actually talked to two of them today. And what do I do? I mentioned, hey, who's, who's your digital marketing? Right? How is that going? Is you know what's working, what isn't working? Would you like another introduction? Right? So what am I doing? I'm actually offering a service to my dental coaching clients. Hey, digital marketing. What do we need? We're going to do a specialty advertising, right? But then I'll be doing a, a favor for the digital marketer themselves, right? What do I hope? I hope they send me referrals, right? I hope they send me to other dentists that I could be the coach for for their clients, right? That's a joint. But but what does my client perceive? Gosh, Matt knows a, a, a you know a specialist who's a digital marketer in dentistry, right? Um, so there's the example. It doesn't detract from my main business. It actually makes me look better, right? To my dentist. Same thing when you do the CPA. Hey, Mr. Dentist, do you how do you like your CPA? Is your CPA a good CPA? Is it not? You know, if not, I have a CPA I can introduce you to. He specializes in dentistry. He's really great at finding your tax savings. What am I doing there? I'm doing you a, a favor. I'm doing my client the favor, hey, we're gonna help you find some tax saving ideas, right? And I'm doing the CPA a favor because I'm bringing him a new client, so then he'll introduce me to his other clients, right? That That's joint venture to, that's how I grow my business. That's literally, joint ventures is my main way to grow my business. So and this, and it, gives the, it, gives your, it gives your client a, a wow experience because you're, it's like, a wow, resource. Matt really yeah. does, really does know my business. He really right. does want to help me. And, and that's ultimately all repeat business, we'll say. All repeat business is right. based around trust. And so when you refer people that make their life better, solve their problems, well, that makes your trust level go way up. Go and, way up. Um, not the opposite. Like we said, it doesn't detract from your core business. It, 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 enhances your trust and anytime you enhance trust your core business is going to get better yep. and that, that's going to convert your customers into repeat buyers and that's what you want in business because we get we we say you want more transactions right to increase your sales well that's more transactions helps that's you build exactly. brand around trust so yeah we were talking so another one we were talking about is hook to book uh, what's your hook so you can make a sale? What's the hook so you can get booked? What's the hook so you can get a sale hook to book? And a lot of times it's, you know, sell more of what's selling. So find out, know your customer, know your niche, what are their hot buttons and give them what they want, right? And so I have a marketing company, you know, they do the, the, the gifts and, and the gift items. Uh, promotional type items. Promotional, yeah. I can't think of it. Yeah, promotional items. And so one of our strategies for them is, you know, the item of the month, the item of the quarter, right? And where do we get that from? It's what's their hottest selling item for the last quarter. Because Dave, you may not know about it, but you know what? You know, I've been selling a ton of these Chotskis and they're using it this way. Maybe you should buy this product and use it this way. And then next month or next quarter, there'll be a new product or a new promotional. Hey, Dave, this is the hottest promotional item of the quarter. And here's how my other clients are using it. You should use it too. What are you doing there? You are not only you're actually giving them what they want. Hey, what's the latest and greatest promotional item you're giving them what they need because, because you're also adding the value added bonuses. I'm going to teach you how to use this product, right? This is the hottest item. And by the way, my education is here's how my other clients are using it to promote their business and why you might want, want to do the same, right? Instead of, Hey Dave, here's a catalog of all the promotional items we sell. You know, right. this, this tchotchke I got is one of my favorites. It's like, it's like a journal book, but it is so nice. You know, who, and I mean, Ray Edwards gave me this, but um, 
I bet he spent, I don't know, probably 50 bucks, maybe 20. Oh, to you can get those things customized done for anywhere from 15 to 30 bucks. Yeah. I, I mean, look so at doing it myself as an it, offer to my coaching clients. It's, yes. a, it's a nice tchotchke and it yes. makes people go, man, that's really cool. So again, this is about the why we're back to number two, which is now granted I'm a writer. So a, a journal book is great. So know your yeah. niche, but it's also a wow experience. It makes me, I mean, it's right here on my desk. There's, there's not a whole lot here on my desk, but that's one of the things on my desk. And I don't use that for everyday notes. I use that for when I'm planning a launch or something else, you know, it's, it's really the, really this, the good stuff. And so he knows the audience and I've got a wow experience on it, out of it. But he, you also have to know your numbers. If you're going to give away a $30 tchotchke, you probably right. make a little more than $30 profit on a customer right. too. Exactly right. They got to be, they got to be, they got to be worth it. Right. And, and that's how we keep getting back. These fundamentals of knowing your client and, and what's your million dollar message and what's your irresistible offer, right? What's your value added bonus could be stick, stuck in there too as a what's your irresistible. Those are all fundamentals that any business owner needs to know and understand and think about. I was talking to one of my dentists this morning, right? Which was, you know, what's your million dollar message? How are you different than other dentists? Why would they go to you as opposed to the dentist across the street, right? Oh, I'm really good at doing this. For, not the platitudes, right? But you've got to have the million dollar message, just like the guy that I was talking to the startup this morning who has a new product and it's similar to other products. So why would I buy your product versus the other product, right? And can you make that distinction great enough that, that, that consumers interested? The answer is, I don't know, which is why we do Kickstarter campaign or a crowdfunding campaign, because I'm not sure that your product is materially different than the other product out there. And technically, you're not either. You think it's great, but let's test it on the check writers, right? Why, why not offer a service, get somebody to pay for it, and then you got a business instead of yeah. create it. Uh, I'm working with another guy right now, a different startup, a, a, a training company, and and that's my keep coming back to him would be. So it's a gr you think it's an awesome training program that is really awesome. How many of them have you sold, right? You might even need to give them away for free so you can improve the product because we don't even know if somebody's going to write you a check for the product. So before you spend any more money developing your online course or your online training program, let's get a check writer in here to test it out. All right. So I want to pause there on the, if that's, I'm yeah. glad you brought that up because we're, we're, we're talking about, we kind of brought into this, how to launch a product inside of somehow yeah. that came into this. So yeah. let's say you're getting ready to launch a product and, and you haven't got any customers yet, but right. I mean like you have customers, but not, in this new product, if you will. Well, the, the best thing you could probably do is get some customers, whether that be paying customers. I did a launch a while back. I wanted to launch an online course. And so what I did is I went and got a client, one client, and then I trained them, I coached them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, then I had the course. Once I did the, the coaching, the six weeks of coaching, then I put the course online and then I had something worth selling. So I, I, of course, once you have the course, it's an evergreen, you can keep selling it. I'm not saying that you're necessarily selling a course, but let's say you make whatever targets, you know, uh, you could make masks, whatever you make. Uh, let's say you make custom masks, go get some people who have your masks and get pictures of them. And, and, you know, well, that's right. You're, you're going down the Tritana. So Ramit Sadie is another guy. I would teach to be rich with his book and he's got a blog and all this kind of stuff. And I forget, I think it's him. Maybe it's Sam Ovens. I'm getting confused. They always say, get three customers, get five customers. You've got to get three to five paying customers because, and I think it's actually five because you can get three of your buddies to do it, right? You can get three family members to do it. When you get five, then you really have a business because if you got five people that are really willing to pay, pay for you, I know two or three of them are legit because your first one or two might be your cousin and your aunt and your family members, right? And so they always say, test your idea, get, I think it's five, it's three to five paying customers, whether it be a discount or not, somebody's got to pay cash, then you know you have a viable product. So if it's an online course, I need three to five paying customers. If it's a new product, I need three to five customers. If it's a new consulting service, three to five customers. Landscape business, I need three to five customers, right? Ideas are great. And, but they're a dime a dozen, right? It's a combination of the 
excellent training program and the excellent marketing, which includes the marketing, knowing your niche and the million dollar message and the irresistible offer that then generates a sale, right? You can have everything else, but until we get cash in the door, you and I are talking about this pre, pre line. I'm working with another guy and it's like, all right, you got, let's get the cash in the door until we get the cash in the door. The concept isn't proven. You have to prove the model works by selling the service, even if it's only to three or five paying customers. Yeah, and, it, and if you have the opportunity to get the paying customers, get the dang customers. Yes. I mean, yes. They, have the, the money. they have the money. And if they have the money and your problem is more, the, you know, the problem you solve, if that product that solves the problem is more valuable to them than the money they have in their hand, they will trade you the money in their hand for your problem solver, whatever that is. It's, it's the nature of, it's the nature of everything that sells is that I have, I have this, this problem solver. Let, let, here, I'll, I'll use an example. Hand sanitizer during the beginning of the crisis. Now, the, the crisis, the, the virus last year. Pandemic, yeah, go ahead. So prior to the pandemic, hand sanitizer was typically about, you could buy a gallon of hand sanitizer for about $4, a gallon for about $4. Now you could also buy a little one for $4, but I mean, you could go out buy it by the gallon for four bucks. Well, by, by a month after the crisis, a gallon of hand sanitizer, I think a five gallon bucket of hand sanitizer was going for about $140. Why? Because the, the, the perceived value was so high that people were willing to do anything to get a hold of it. Well, it's the same product, right? I mean, so what was the difference? The difference was the perceived value changed. This is what the million dollar message is. You've got to change the perceived value in the mind of your client. And that has nothing to do, the product did not change during the crisis. The product was the same. There was a million of them on, so you could say there's too much competition. There was a million of them on the market. What changed was the perceived value. Apparently the perceived value of toilet paper changed too. Because, because <laughs> the- run on those. But, but, but the, the point being, the product remained the same. So this is what the million dollar message does. We talk a lot about this, yeah, this, a great point. this million dollar message. The million dollar message changes the perceived value of the product in the mind, in the eyes of your prospect and your client. And when that happens, everything changes. You are no longer playing the pricing game. You are now in the selling something in high demand because the perceived value is so high. Right, you're out of the commodity business. That's exactly right. So these are, this is really funny. We, we, I think we've shown this wheel of fortune, our, our core base at that pie chart with all this. So I'd like to, you know, where does this stuff fall in? You know, how to thrive, how to, how to get your business to thrive. We got some foundational stuff. We talked about know your niche, your target market. We talked about your million dollar message. Um, generating more leads. We actually mentioned during this call, a joint venture strategic alliance, right? And value added bonuses. So that's kind of funny how that fits in our more leads. We actually talked about a compelling offer, the irresistible offer. That actually falls under our category of more conversions, right? So that's part of that more conversion. And then we actually talked about additional products and services, that value added. Remember we talked about, like I said, the, the pressure washer, the gutter cleaning, right? The golf magazine that goes on top. That's under more transactions, how to get more transactions, how to offer new, new products or services to your existing clientele. So it's really funny how they fall into our little pie chart of, you know, the foundations, the more leads, the more conversions, the more transactions. We didn't really talk about more profits today, except by doing those other things, more profits actually happen, but we didn't actually talk about profit strategy. Except on the, know, numbers, on the know your numbers part, I want to pause there because profits. I want to come into the profit part of this. So um, I sell on Amazon. I have a 100% um, Amazon rating, meaning I just, yeah. basically it means we ship on time, and when people ask for a return, we just give their money back. No questions asked. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's seller forums on Amazon where people are complaining because of returns. They didn't, they didn't satisfy the customer. So Amazon dropped them under 97%. If you drop under Amazon under 97% to 96.9, now you no longer are preferred and therefore nobody sees your products. 
Right. And people are like, well, that's not fair. Well, Amazon is not penalizing you. What they're doing is they're promoting others who are better. So they're, they're, so these people are complaining because their business goes down 70%. Know your numbers. Is one refund going to hold up your business? This is, this is knowing your numbers is what, yeah. what is the cost to satisfy the customer? Is it better just to send the money back? I mean, I, I think it's a whole lot easier just to give their money back than to have anybody negative in the marketplace. That's knowing your numbers. And what is that? That's, that's the wow experience, even though yes. they weren't happy, because you're always going to have some people aren't happy, but that falls under knowing your numbers and the wow experience at the same time. Give their money back if you have the opportunity so you can stay in the good graces of not Amazon, if that's your selling model, stay in the good graces of the customer always. Yeah, I know that's it's, exactly right. They say the customer is always right. No, they're not always right. But give their money back and give then they're not your customer anymore. Yeah, that's pretty good. So this is a pretty good one. We're talking about ways to, for your business to thrive here. And I'm just trying to show you how it all fits into our, our little pie chart, right? This is the kind of stuff we talk about in our mastermind, right? There are the fundamentals. They're going to foundation, more leads, more conversions, more transactions, more profits, right? All these categories fall under that regardless of the business you're in. This is the kind of stuff we talk about in our mastermind. If you want to apply to our mastermind, Matt at ProfitabilityMD.com, Dave at ProfitabilityMD.com. We love doing these podcasts. We're trying to help a thousand business owners find 50, 75, $100,000 in their business. We do that through something we call the Profit Acceleration Session, right? You can call and schedule one of those with us. And what we're trying to do there is find business owners, 50,000, 75,000, $100,000 in their business. How are we doing that? by applying these same foundations and leads and conversions and transactions, transactions and profits to their specific business. So those numbers are how to identify the money for them. If you want a profit acceleration session, reach out to Matt at ProfitabilityMD.com, Dave at ProfitabilityMD.com. Where this information is for free that we give out. We do this podcast every week, ProfitabilityMD.com, ProfitabilityMD.com, uh, our YouTube channel, you wanna watch our pretty faces. This is what we're doing. We are here to help business owners. Business is fun. Getting clients is easy, right? It's all about the fundamentals and following. What do we say? We have, in order to be successful, you need three things. You need commitment, a roadmap, and a support system. Dave and I have already got two out of the three. We've got the roadmap and we've got the support system already built. We just need your commitment. Come join us. Could not have said it any better myself, Matt. All right, man. This is good stuff. Have a great afternoon. Take care. You too. See you.